After adding the undo feature, I wanted to neaten some mild code before moving on. I'd managed to build up a heap of redundancies and other efficiencies over time. I didn't really know what to do next, so I decided to use an app to help me manage the project and organize and plan. I went with what any good indie game dev would, and opened Notepad to start a list of future additions to the game. I was hoping this would give me some sort of motivation and direction for the game, since I always found myself getting lost in the unnecessary details, like art. It kind of worked, and I started with the first item on the list, particle effects, which is still art. I guess I'd put it under gameplay updates for some reason, so it felt like I was doing something important. I messed around with the overwhelming number of settings in the Unity particle system until it no longer looked like the character was being attacked by 10 million fireflies. I gave my character movement class a reference to the particle system. And when the character moves it calls create dust, which at the moment just plays the particle effect once. This is how it looked in the game. The particles were way too bright and they came out in bursts, but after making a limited particle system in the engine I made a few years ago, having something like this on the screen after such a little amount of effort was exciting for me. But also, you're inside, why is your room so dusty? Then this little fitness fanatic fancied tracking their steps, so I said I'd make him a move counter. It's a possible feature in the game anyway if it seems to be good for the types of puzzles I make, but I also knew it would be helpful to have during development. This is how I had it at the time. I made level state its own class and gave it an integer which tracks which move it is. I'd added a restart feature and wanted to be able to undo back past a restart and have the move counter display the number of moves made before the restart. You'll see what I mean later on. The level manager class has a reference to one of Unity's text mesh pro objects which will display the move count to the player. It also stores an integer move count, initiates it to zero at startup and creates a new level state with it. Whenever the player moves, the level manager increments the move count and adds a new level state with that move count to the list of all moves made for undoing and restarting. Whenever the player undoes or restarts, the appropriate level state is set and the move count is set to the move count of that new level state. In every frame, the text mesh pose the text mesh pros check. In every frame, the text mesh pros text is set to the value of move count. It looks like this in the game. The number goes down as I undo. But if I move, then restart, and then keep moving. When I undo, it'll go back to zero, then back up to the 14 moves I made before the restart, and then continue undoing. After adding the move counter, I wanted to go back to the art again. I kept falling into this trap, but this time I convinced myself that it was to make the art easier in the future. I reduced the palette down to 5 by choosing this strange yellowy green colour range from the palette I was using before, and started on a few UI elements. And I learnt my lesson from my whole wall of walls. So I only made a few this time. They're all so insignificantly different from each other, I was getting caught up in the unnecessary details again. I even made this little scene to picture what the UI would look like alongside some gameplay. tested it against a starker Game Boy-esque colour scheme. I like the original duller yellowy green, but I also like the new one, 
What do you think? Anyway, I was getting lost in the yard again. I lost motivation and tossed the game away for another few months. When I came back, I wanted to approach things differently. I figured organisation was one of the main things stopping me each time, so I started to make a Trello board of all future plans for the game. All game mechanics, items, graphics, sounds and levels are to be added to the Trello board before being added to the game. The hope was, even if I haven't moved on to the next card, I could work on other list items on the card I am up to if I lose motivation on the item I'm working on. Surely this will keep me motivated and focused on the task at hand so I don't keep getting distracted by the art. Okay, what was I working on? Fix movement speed. Okay, but I should do a little on the art first. I pulled the character into the Game Boy S colours, but again, I'm still not quite settled on the palette yet, just that it'll have five colours. I also realised that I'd have to decide which wall from my wall of walls I'd call upon. After bringing them into the new colour scheme, I narrowed it down to these four before choosing the final one. The chosen one was this piece here, so I put it in a display enclosure for the character to admire. I pulled some of the other sprites into the new 5 colour palette and finally had yet another tile sheet to put into the game. I know art isn't necessarily necessary for good gameplay, but having them in the game at this time really did help things in terms of my motivation towards development. It was starting to look and feel like a game, which made working on the game logic and mechanics a lot easier and more fun from this point on. While the undo feature, restart feature and move counter are technically part of the game logic, they didn't really add anything to the actual gameplay. So I was keen to finally get into making this game into an actual game. Alright, that's all for this update. In the next one I'll finally be adding a whole bunch of actual game mechanics and interactable items, like keys, doors, buttons, pushable boxes and portals. After this first round of adding items and bug fixing the code, these videos will be caught up to where I am now in the game, so any suggestions or tips are more than welcome since I'll actually be able to implement them after the next video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and the development process so far. See ya folks, have a good one.